Um, 67% of your constituents voted to stay in the EU. They didn't want Brexit, let alone a no-deal Brexit. So why don't you take your seat in Parliament in order to make sure you can influence what happens next? Well, my constituents also voted for a Sinn Féin MP who wouldn't take his seat uh, here at Westminster. You How do you influence events then? Well, well, you have to remember that Yes, I accept in Britain the, the centre of political gravity may well be Westminster, but if you're a constituent of mine, it's Dublin and it's Brussels in Europe. We very much have been on the other side of the negotiating table. So the rights of Irish citizens, the rights of my farmers and the business community and the, the civic society who live along the border of my constituency, it's Brussels and the EU27 who have been protecting it. And that's where our influence has become to bear. That's where we have lobbied. That's where but we've no been But no deal to. isn't off the table, despite what uh, some opposition MPs are trying to do. No deal isn't still off the table and may not be. Surely the stakes are so high that you should sit here and try and influence things and represent your constituents. Constituents look in right across Ireland. They look in last night with complete amusement. They see the theatre, the, the pantomime that Westminster has become over recent months. And there's, oh, no, des on. there's no desire Opposition, to be... Opposition no MPs desire. are on the cusp of stopping a no-deal Brexit, which is what the, you would want. There is no desire to be in there to be part of that. They know the rights, the issues that they want. The interests of Ireland have never been represented by a Westminster Parliament. They know that. Why do you take the salary? They, they they know, I don't take a salary. You don't? I don't get a salary from Westminster. Right. You should know that, Victoria. Yep. But at the end of the day, people living in Ireland know their rights and their interests are represented by Dublin uh, and by the EU27 when it comes to Brexit. You can't tell me that Boris Johnson's <laughs> government is going to represent the rights of the people living in Ireland. Will you vote today, uh, Geoffrey Donaldson, to ensure the UK doesn't leave the EU without a deal? Well, uh, we want to deal with the European Union. But uh, will you, you, completely will you, undermine, to... you completely undermine the UK government's negotiating position when you throw away their strongest bargaining point. And that's the problem with this. People say they want a deal, they want to avoid no deal, and, and I'm absolutely with them on that. But the best way to avoid no deal is to get a deal, a deal that Parliament can support. And bear in mind, many of the MPs who voted last night against the government are MPs who voted against the withdrawal agreement before on three occasions, like me, because they have real concerns about what the EU are proposing you and know the impact no, it would have on you, the UK. Sorry to interrupt. You know there is no evidence that serious proposal, proposals have been put forward from number 10 to the EU. Well, Victoria, no uh, the Prime Minister has only been off as a matter of a few weeks. I do know this, that there are serious discussions taking place in Downing Street and with other key stakeholders to draw up and present those proposals to the European Union. Um, if we're going to get this right, we need to work hard to ensure that the proposals are not only capable of reaching an accommodation with the EU, but capable of having the support of Parliament as well. Does it not concern you that only 6% of cross-border businesses are ready for no deal? I mean, how big a hit to the economy are you willing to take? Well, we don't want to take a hit for uh, the economy in Northern Ireland. We want to see Northern Ireland prosper. But uh, we're working with the government to uh, introduce mitigation measures uh, in the event that no deal happens. But the best way to avoid no deal, which is what we want to do, is to get a deal with the EU. So how does last night make it easier for the UK government to negotiate a new deal with the European Union. That's the problem I have with what MPs who say they want to avoid no deal did last night. They're actually making it more difficult to get a deal, which raises the suspicion in many people's minds that what they really want to do is to stop Brexit altogether. And there is suspicion in some people's minds that you want a no-deal Brexit, despite people like Barbara Gray, Assistant Chief Constable, heads up the Counter-Terrorism Response Unit for the Police Service of Northern Ireland, saying that Brexit without a deal, could become a motivating factor for extremists in the event of a disorderly exit. She says, we predict a six to 12 month period, if there's a no deal Brexit, there could be an upsurge in violence. But with respect, Victoria, the violence is already happening. Sorry. I don't know if the BBC reports it anymore, but we had an attempt uh, so uh, recently okay to, to murder uh, police officers on the border while we're still members of the European Union, right. while there is still no infrastructure on and, the border. And Barbara Gray is saying there'll be an upsurge. To be clear, with a no to be Brexit. absolutely clear, Victoria, are you seriously suggesting that the United Kingdom should determine its future because it's threatened by terrorists who don't accept the rule of law, who don't accept any constitutional outcome other than what they demand. We should all be rejecting terrorism. We okay. should not be trying to explain why it happens. Do you of course I don't want violence, but another, neither do I want no deal, by the way. I want to get a deal with the European Union uh, and I want to honour the wishes of my constituency and of the people of the United Kingdom who voted to leave the EU. If 
there is a no-deal Brexit, would you anticipate an upsurge in violence, as Barbara Gray potentially does? Well, you only have to look at the assessments from the civil service at home uh, in Belfast, and of course the British government's own scenario planning around this, uh, where you know senior police constables, uh, senior people within uh, the security apparatus have identified that as a, as a major issue. Okay. But I go back to Geoffrey's earlier point. There has been on the table, there has been a deal on the table for quite some time now. A deal that is at the very bottom line had a backstop that protected all the interests, all the issues that Geoffrey talks about. But the DUP have refused to back those people they're supposed to represent and to back that deal. They haven't done that. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Chris Hazard from Sinn Féin. Geoffrey Donaldson from the DUP. Thank you.